Welcome to the fifth episode of the Tank Workshop Diaries, which is a Tank Fest special. Uh, this episode is being sponsored by Great Courses Plus, which is an online video learning site. Tune in to the end of the video and we'll give you information on a special offer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Tank Workshop Diaries. Uh, specifically, we're looking at Tankfest 2019. We had a fantastic event with 20,000 people over three days. So if some of you would have been there, hopefully. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. It always takes a lot of preparation, and I'm very grateful for the guys, um, everyone within the museum, to make this happen again safely. Um, so we're going to look at some of the preparation. Um, Gareth will uh, talk through some of the projects and some of the planning of it. And Jonathan will start by looking at the uh, Churchill, which they managed to get uh, ready for Tankfest in time. When we started the Churchill project, the idea was to get it ready for Tankfest. Uh, the last time you saw it, we were putting the gearbox in, and as you can see, uh, she's now ready to go. If you remember, we t changed the track on this by salvaging a track from another vehicle. Even though this was salvaged track, it was quite tight, uh, and we had to run it several times up and down the apron under tow in order to free it off and apply a bit of heat on some of the pins. Gradually, with all this wear, uh, what's happened is the track has now loosened up and it's began to stretch, uh, so much so that you can see the loose bit down here and the wheel is not coming into contact with it. If you look at the adjusters here, you see that they're at the end of their run, which means we can't take that slack out. So the only option open to us is to undo the adjusters and take the t uh, track adjusting wheels all the way back. And that'll create enough space for us to drop a link on either side of the vehicle. We then reconnect the track, re-tighten them using the track adjusters, only this time they will hopefully come to about here with plenty of run left. Um, and all of the slack will be taken out. The last time you saw us, we were putting in the gearbox, and that's been successfully done, and we've hooked up the clutch with its associated air servo. The final piece of the puzzle was to make sure that all of the linkages between the driver and the hull were all complete, bled, and working correctly. The yard testing and the arena testing is an important part of the project. It's our confirmation that the work we've carried out has been done to a suitable standard. We prove that the vehicle can run under its own power, um, can steer, change gear and brake correctly. We do that in the yard as much as we can first. We've done some apron work with this vehicle to um, master the controls in changing gear. And then we take it out on the arena, both for the driver's confidence okay. and for our confidence um, that we've got no major leaks. Starting. Things we typically find out um, when we carry out this testing are the inequities of a, a crash gearbox. Um, we also have an added feature on the Churchill whether it has a stopping, a gearbox stopping uh, facility when the foot goes down on the clutch. Um, it works the same way as a, a stick change on a Centurion, for those of you that know about that. It just slows the transmission down enough so that the gear can slot in, and that took quite a bit of getting used to. A hydraulic clutch is also a bit different to one that's on a linkage. Um, the feel can be sometimes a little bit deceptive um, and it takes um, practice in order to be able to control the revs, particularly for the gear change when they're very important. Another thing that we learn is that when you start the engine first thing in the day, you have to let it warm up before you apply any pressure to the accelerator at all. This engine has to be really hot uh, in order to function well um, and to get the correct response from the accelerator that we've talked about earlier. It seems harder with a tiller than a pair of sticks for some reason. 
By way of a summary, the Churchill Project has given the team an excellent opportunity to work with hydraulics and pneumatics that work in concert in order to get the clutch, the brakes and the steering um, going on this vehicle. Every one of us has learned something about British tank design and about how to fix a variety of difficult problems, um, including if you think back to Bob's hydraulic testing rig. Um, as you can see from the top, the catwalks aren't fitted yet. That will create an awful lot of more dust than we would normally have. Uh, it's something for the driver to uh, cope with. It really does need it track for some. From the apprentices to the seasoned technicians, um, we've spent over 600 hours on this vehicle. For those of you that watch the Matilda Diaries, you'll be able to see the difference in appearance of the work that we've done on this uh, Churchill and the finished job on the Matilda. It's important to understand why there is a difference. Um, our brief on this project was simply to get the vehicle up and running in safe running order um, in order that it could take part in Tangfest 2019. Uh, we didn't have the time or the budget uh, to do a complete restoration, which is what you saw on the Matilda 2. That's not to say in the future that that won't happen, um, it's just at this point uh, we've achieved the brief which was to get it ready for Tankfest 2019. On the previous episode of Workshop Diaries you would have seen Alistair working on the Type 59 clutch assembly. Um, this was in preparation to get the vehicle ready for Tank Fest. Unfortunately, due to a number of reasons, uh, the vehicle can no longer participate uh, as we have been unable to rectify the fault in the time required. We had the vehicle out on test uh, and it was running really well actually. Um, we were doing five, six, seven laps, going up and down through the gearbox and the vehicle was performing well. Near the end of the test, we went to go for a fifth gear change at which point the clutch pedal then refused to re-engage uh, and we lost all drive. So Alistair and the team uh, worked frantically to try and get the vehicle prepped, uh, but uh, as I said, unfortunately, it's to no avail. We think that the main issue is the, the clutch plates on the Type 59, they're steel on steel. So on a conventional clutch, you'll have uh, a steel plate with a friction material on. Uh, with this, it's quite rudimentary. So it's uh, a series of steel plates that are forced together. We think what may have happened is the, the clutches were slipping slightly, which caused uh, an enormous amount of heat and has actually caused the plates to weld together. Um, we won't be able to ascertain this properly until we actually get the, uh, the radiators back up and, and start to strip the clutch down again. Um, we're now four days away from Tankfest and we just don't have the time. Uh, but the vehicle will be on display um, in the museum in the future and potentially you'll see it on Tiger Day. When you're working with mechanics, tanks, complex pieces of equipment, uh, we don't, you can't always get it right. Um, this being one of those instances, it's something that as a department we've got quite little experience on working on the, the Soviet era uh, vehicles. We actually made quite a lot of progress in terms of what we learned and how this vehicle operates. Equally, as we managed to rectify a number of other faults that we found with the vehicle when we, we were stripping it down. Um, but it's a learning curve, you don't always get it right and given the time frames we've got now with Tankfest looming, it's just not possible to do. That's not to say that we won't have it sorted in the near future though. As I mentioned on the Type 59, we can't always get it right. The Challenger 1 behind me is different to this. We've actually managed to get this vehicle fixed. We've had support from Horseman Suspension um, up in Bath, which you'll see in a future episode. This vehicle uh, has had a lot of work done on its suspension, and when it was on test, we noticed that the engine had generated an oil leak. Uh, so the guys you see working behind me, we've had to pack out. We've uh, ID'd where the fault was. It was actually the oil feed and return pipes from B-Bank Turbo. They've now been resealed with uh, new gaskets and, and as you can see the guys are just getting ready to put the decks back on. This vehicle will be running at Tankfest and you will see it going around the arena. For Tankfest 2019, we managed to get 50 vehicles uh, together again, uh, some of our own vehicles and some of the guest vehicles. 
across the army with 13 vehicles, so over 60 vehicles on site, which is obviously quite a logistical challenge. But every year it's quite difficult for us to uh, select, hopefully, a new selection of vehicles, or different than the previous year, to get the variety going. And to be able to achieve this, uh, over the last few years we started working more and more with guest vehicle owners, private collectors, some foundations, but also foreign armies and their historic collections. So not only did we have the British Army obviously on site with 13 currently serving vehicles, but we also had the, the French Army with their fantastic uh, Panzer from Samur, the museum in France. We had the Belgium Army with the National Military Museum joining us with their Sherman Firefly. And we also had the Dutch Army joining us with five low loaders this year. Uh, three of those were for vehicles with a liaison exercise with the British Army, two boxers and a recovery vehicle, recovery leopard, that later performed in Tankfest as well. And they also brought the uh, amazing PRTL, the anti-aircraft gun, which could be seen on Saturday and Sunday here at the Tank Museum. So it's always a big challenge to um, make sure you have uh, enough vehicles, plenty of variety. So over 60 vehicles need to be all in one area, the tank park. That's where they leave from to enter the arena and come back from the arena. So there's a lot of logistics going on. And the lineup is very important. What vehicle is for what slot and how they come back, who marshals them in, how often the vehicle is being used. So now we show Jonathan and, um, and Gareth planning this uh, ahead of tank fest to, to, to see how much thinking goes on before we put the vehicles out there in the tank park. One of the key features of the Tank Fest is the Tank Museum's Tank Park. The Tank Park is where approximately 50 vehicles operate from during the displays throughout the day. Um, not only this, the Tank Park is actually open to the public uh, in between vehicle displays, allowing visitors to get up close, to speak to the crews, uh, and really actually get to see what these tanks are like up close and personal. This year I've put Jonathan in charge of the tank park. Uh, Jonathan will explain to you some of the difficulties we have uh, in terms of getting the vehicles in the correct order so they don't inhibit each other throughout the course of the day. Because of the success of Tank Fest, um, year on year uh, we get more guest vehicles um, and we've got an increasing amount of um, platforms to move uh, within the same amount of space. Um, and in order to um, plan that, we need to um, represent each tank with one of these cards. Um, we set them up um, where their starting positions will be um, at the start of the day and then we run through each serial because um, a lot of the tanks are parked in front of each other some of them are up to three um, vehicles deep and we must be absolutely sure that when we set them up on the ready line for a particular display when they come back in uh, we can put them in position without them boxing in a tank that we need for a future serial. On the Friday and the Saturday the tank park needs to be ready to rock and roll for the following morning. Uh, the Sunday is less important because we don't do the display on the Monday. Um, so by having the, the numbers on, we can make sure that the vehicles are reversed back into their correct lane, as we've got here. Um, so we minimise disruption for the following morning. On the table, you'll see we've got some of the layout already sort of in place. Uh, the main reason for that being is the main battle tanks, we always try and separate out from the smaller vehicles for a number of reasons. Firstly, they take up the most room. Uh, and secondly, the mobility is a lot lower. So but you'll see across the, this back row, they're all parked up individually. Uh, as you can imagine, if you had three deep main battle tanks, you'd run out of room very quickly. Equally, at the end of the tank park, um, the British Army have their vehicles there as well. So the tank park is, is a combination of tank museum vehicles, guest vehicle owners, and the British Army. The main planning tool that we use is the order of events. Um, this one is on version 11, which gives you some idea of how many times we've had to massage this. It contains all the information for each of the serials that we run during the day, from the times that each serial goes out to the crew that are actually manning the vehicles. Um, and as I said before, we need to lay these cards out at the start point so we can run the entire day without boxing any of the tanks in. The tanks are all laid out as they will be on the day and now uh, Gareth and I will run each serial individually putting them on the ready line and then going through the recovery phase where we get them back into their original positions not only for the next serial but also at the end of the day uh, ready for the next day of events. Um, for example the first serial uh, includes the Hotchkiss Jeep, the Daimler Dingo, the Morris Armoured Car, the Daimler Armoured Car, the M16 Half Track, the Universal Carrier, the Valentine DD, the Stuart M3, Sherman Crystal, Sherman Firefly. As you can imagine, 
getting them out, getting them back, getting them into position is okay on the planning table, but we'd have problems if one of these broke down. On the day, we already know that there'll be a few situations that we'll have to deal with on the hoof, but we have to start somewhere. We've sorted it out on the tabletop, as you've seen, but sooner or later, we're gonna have to do it out on the tank park for real. And here we are, where in a few weeks' time, this will be the hub of operations for all vehicle-related movement for Tank Fest 2019. Um, so I need to know that everybody's on the same sheet when it comes to how we're going to move them. So the first serial that goes out is basically all of this lot here. All right? And they, I want them to come out and be on the left-hand side. All right? In line. Then what we do when they go, we bring them to the hands and make them on the right-hand side. That's very important because when this lot come back, we don't want to line a tank stopping us from putting them away. Agreed? Uh, so, left hand side first serial, set up the right hand side. When the first serial come back in, they come back on the left hand side. We get them all the way in, and then we reverse them in in the same order that they're in now. So, everyone happy? Very safe, please do not reverse anything unless there is somebody behind it. You see how tight it is in there? And make sure that the guy at the back of the vehicle has got eye contact with the guy at the front of the vehicle at all times. And drink plenty of water and have the boots fit and the males get the drink. Um, as you saw on the table, that was the table planning, and we've done the shuffle on the Thursday, and now this is the first serial just about to go out into the arena. This episode of Tank Workshop Diaries has been brought to you by Great Courses Plus. With Great Courses Plus, you can subscribe to watch amazing lectures and courses on pretty much anything that you might be interested in. Subscribers get unlimited access to a huge number of video lectures about subjects like history, engineering and photography. Today, Great Courses Plus are offering you a fantastic trial subscription offer. Click in the description below. I'd like to recommend the series Everyday Engineering, which has episodes on the internal combustion engine, torque, transmission, suspension, and other concepts we discuss here on the Tank Workshop Diaries. So click on the link in the description below to start your free trial today. You'll also be helping the Tank Museum. <laughs> worked on all of the... Um, have we worked on this? How long has it taken? Three weeks? Or my life. <laughs> that, uh, that was a sneeze I was holding in for ages. <laughs> 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 well done, first vehicle in. Excellent. Only another 50 to go. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And please do subscribe to the Tank Museum's channel on YouTube and support us on Patreon so that we can make even more videos like this.